your presence in this space is no mere coincidence. It's a meticulous and intentional connection designed to deliver the profound message of Apostle Joshua Selman directly to you. This message goes beyond being a mere source of blessings. It's a dynamic force, sparking the flame of greatness within you. Open your heart expansively and permit your mind to fully immerse in the opulence of this transformative diet. Before we venture further, I extend a sincere invitation for you to actively participate in this meaningful content. Engage by expressing your gratitude. Extend a virtual thumbs up to the video, share its wisdom with those in your circles who could find it beneficial, and become a subscriber to our channel for an uninterrupted flow of enlightening content. Your support is not only acknowledged, but also holds a pivotal role in our continual endeavor to disseminate these profound messages as you tune in to absorb this distinctive message. There are two limitations that if you are a pioneer of anything, you have to be aware of. If you are not careful, you will fall prey to these two limitations. Number one, pioneering requires humility to keep growing and not to fight improvements when you see it. The danger of pioneering is that because most pioneers are emotionally connected to their pain. They are emotionally connected to the lonely nights, the sacrifices that have gone into doing what they are doing. Anytime they see an improvement on what they have done, they will most likely frown at it. It is the weakness that comes with pioneering. Hallelujah. This is true. If you have ever pioneered anything in any degree in your life, you will know the bias. How many of you have seen parents buy their first car? Remember, the first car that they will never sell. Your dad is a billionaire and yet that first car is somewhere in the garage. Sir, why won't you sell this car? And he will tell you, you let me, this car reminds me that God is faithful. And when the car is scattered and gone, he will keep one tire, he will keep one gearbox, and you, are you worshipping it? And he says, you will not understand. I used to wonder many years ago why a lot of elderly people seem to be emotionally connected to things that didn't make sense to young people. They will keep certain monuments. They will keep certain gifts. You will see a man holding a very squeezed book, holding one squeezed letter, and he will not let it go. And you say, this letter, I got this letter in 1941. This was the first award I received. And the person he's talking to is sleeping. Because it makes no sense to you. So it is not unusual that when you pioneer things and they work at any level, you become emotionally connected to your results such that it becomes difficult to embrace improvement. Imagine that the Wright brothers came back to life and they saw what looked like the initial stages of their invention. They would run away from their own invention. Today we have supersonic aircraft. I mean that can move kilometers within minutes. I'm not sure they saw that far when they started. How about those who started vehicles? You see, let me tell you this. Models must be secured enough to allow improvement without feeling like failures. It is one thing models need to understand. One of the reasons I tell you with all due respect why the body of Christ has not evolved is because the emotional connect of models to the dealings that they had with God may not easily allow them to embrace other dimensions of God because they are emotionally connected to the things that have produced their result today. But God is always in motion. Did you hear what I said? Technology is a lesson to us that any model that you see is not yet the best of its version. Phones, cars, every year there is improvement on the models. It is because of the flexibility of science to allow creativity find its cause that today we have all kinds of things. If those who initially brought for us technology if they sat on what they did and said there cannot be improvement listen the model of healing that we know 
is the one we saw from scripture and the one that has been demonstrated to us but I, I tell you before Christ returns you will see other models of healing where people will stand from one position and literally speak to nations who would have known that the sun can stand still over a territory but one person did it and just because it's not been done again does not mean it will not be done if the need arises the same God can make it happen if making the sun stand still is a strategy for massive salvation, you can trust that the Lord of the harvest will place grace on someone. But the question is when it happens, will you have the heart to believe? See, the current move of God always, almost always fights the next move of God. It is a limitation, the second limitation with models. The current move of God always almost always seems to fight the next move of god if i have seen god move this way if i have seen god lift men this way if i have seen god prosper men this way chances are excellent that when i see god move again in a way that is foreign to my experience immediately i flag it off and i say no god cannot prosper this way now look up let me give you an example I will never advocate carelessness, laziness, get rich quick, and so on and so forth. The model for wealth as we know in our world is diligence, the Lord blessing the works of your hands, and you grow gradually. If you build a house after 20 years, 30 years, men will clap for you and say, that's right, that's how life works. But in the economy of God, there are other possibilities that only few people have revealed. For instance, by this time tomorrow. Now, what if that happens to someone? You have defied all the economic laws you know. That is not throwing away the laws. It is building on that foundation that God can also go this far. How about a fish producing coin? How about manna falling from heaven? What other dimension is there to God that we have not seen? What other dimension is there to the kingdom? What other dimension is there to evangelism that we have not seen? Imagine that for instance, just an example, a man now steps into a dimension of intercession where you pray in a certain way and the spirit of God can literally make a multitude of people to have dreams of the cross in one night. That can be a dimension. And you find multitudes saved by the next day. Everybody saying, I had the same kind of dream. And thousands of people get born again by themselves in one day. Could it be that that is a dimension that is reserved for the end time? Models are important. But the challenge with models, number one, I repeat, is that because they are emotionally connected to their current results and their experiences, chances are excellent that sometimes they can feel insecure and they can feel like failures if any improvement is added on their initial experience are we together yes let me tell you the truth when i started ministry i didn't see this kind of manifestations that you see now i know there are times you are teaching and then when you start ministering you see that maybe a special healing program and people are shouting jumping up and down but we did not see it in this manner i had to study scripture myself to say i hope that this thing is of god how do you talk and every day people are shouting from start to finish if it's a miracle service people understand but even when you are joking somebody is still shouting so i needed to go to scripture and say god what is wrong am i all right It was William Branham who would stand on a crusade ground and not minister for a long time and he would say he's waiting for the angel that signifies his revelation. He would stand walking for a long time and later on he would just smile and say he has come and begin to prophesy. Now, I'm not saying you use that model, but I'm saying these are possibilities that have been shown in scripture, have been shown in the lives of men. 
it will be stupid for any man to go to a river in Abuja and sit down and say fish come quickly bring my house rent no but it will be totally it will be totally unbelief on your own part to shut that possibility from God if it happened once it a portal has been opened again it will not close it will only be administered when it is needed you see that now every possibility that is open in the spirit creates a portal in the earth where it can happen again and again sometimes they are reserved because the saints are not matured enough to walk in that dimension God seeing that it can lead to another kind of error that will end up destroying the body of Christ. Now, most people who are new in the faith may not understand a strange experience that we used to have many years ago. It was the experience of oil and gold dust. There used to be these experiences. When we started ministry, many people would have these experiences. Oil coming out of their hands. I had videos where oil was dropping from a cross in a church not manipulation you will see it from the video jars of oil you will see feet of angels laced with gold dust silver dust as we saw this thing there was a breakout of it that time in zaria many believers started coming into it you know what it now started leading to error because many people will go to pray and be looking around their body they wanted gold dust and god withdrew that sign till today so there are many things that God will not allow, not because he cannot do it. He is more interested in the growth of believers. I have cried myself. Many of us who are, have been quite old in this ministry know, I have cried myself and what came out is oil, not tears. Sometimes we don't share these testimonies because we do not want to create a negative pattern. Someone will go now and say, wow, so oil is proof of anointing. And start praying and say, if your oil is not coming out of your hand, you don't know God. Another movement will start credited to your model. Are you seeing that now? It is the reason why we hide our experiences like I taught you behind the cross. And we insist that only that which is consistent, is, is consistent with scripture is known and revealed to people. But let me tell you, there are many, many experiences. There are some things I will tell you about my life and my experience with God. Some of you will not even believe it. So we shelve it and give glory to God. And that which is profitable to the church is what we communicate. Many of us here, I believe, are going to be models to a generation. You must beware. Hear me models are foundations you must be secured enough for improvements to be made on what you have laid and yet not feel like a failure how many of you have seen the foundation of a house do you paint it the foundation of the house is about the ugliest part of that building it's even so down that you don't see it yet that is what holds the building hallelujah all of the aesthetics in this beautiful auditorium is courtesy the strength of the foundation that is laid so there are people who have modeled certain dimensions of god but right now god is bringing other word-based scripture consistent dimensions it's like seals that have been closed for the end time and now they are being opened we are seeing god move in ways that we never imagined again that he would move we are seeing God do things now are we together now that may be foreign to the experience of people but is consistent in scripture I'm saying this that when you become a model even if you are Samuel or Eli be careful when God begins to speak to Samuel in a way you do not understand don't call it an attack and don't call it error among the many failures of Eli one thing he did right was to discern that even though his eyes were dim he had seen that a new move is rising called Samuel and he was secured enough to say if God speaks to you maybe if I were Eli and I hear that God is calling Samuel maybe some of us would have killed Samuel and say you would die here and now isn't that true Maybe some of us would have said, if God ever speaks to you, Samuel is a demon spirit. But Eli told him, if he says this, say, speak for your servant heareth. 
and that became the journey that made Samuel a mighty prophet who ordained the kings in Israel whose word did not fall to the ground. Many of us are inevitably going to be better than our parents financially, spiritually, ministerially. But let me give you a word of caution. Never fight foundations because of the beauty of the superstructure. Did you hear what I said? Today, when we say the inventors of vehicles, with all due respect, we don't call Toyota, we don't call Mercedes-Benz, we don't call all of these cars, even though they have produced cars at a level we never imagined, the credit still goes to those who founded it. If I ask you who is the founder of electricity today, as much as we know and history has told us, you would not mention the guy working in the power holding company in Nigeria. You will not even walk, mention the one who started solar panels. No, the credit still goes to the foundation. This again becomes a caution for the generation rising. We must never look down on fathers and those who have become models because we may have seen certain areas. No, a foundation is why a building stands. A building can crash down and you can rebuild it if the foundation is right. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed. Remember my teaching last week? I told us that the stature of a man in the spirit is beyond the quality of his rema for want of word. If you depend on just the quality of our speakings to measure spirituality, you will make a mistake. You would have said Billy Graham. Billy Graham did not perform many known miracles as we see. In fact, I didn't find any quite frankly in his videos. Of course, I believe there will be others. However, will I ever stand and try to match my stature with Billy Graham today? No. Even a blind man who is not born again knows that there is an east and west difference. Hopefully we will rise in our lifetime, but we are still on the journey and we must recognize it. There's Billy Graham's message online. There's my message online. Many of you listen to my message. But that does not mean I'm greater than Billy Graham. No. Again, our arrogant world will soon believe that we are better. No. We will be an improvement. But you see, that foundation that was laid is what has helped us to be able to build today. It is the reason why, among other things, we can go to Manchester we can go to UK, we can go to America, we can go to Canada because someone challenged our faith that on account of the gospel, God can pick you from your lowly estate and you can speak his purposes to the nations regardless the color of your skin and that the same Lord is rich unto all. You understand me so far? Shout Amen. amen. I am confident that the sermons you've immersed yourself in have served as a wellspring of blessings uplifting your life and instilling a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve God. We extend a warm invitation for you to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. By activating the notification bell, you ensure that you remain connected and never miss any of our upcoming videos. Your subscription signifies more than a mere click. It represents a pledge to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled journey with us as our channel aspires to be a haven for both spiritual seekers and devoted believers. We ardently believe in the transformative power of God's Word, and our objective is to share messages that deeply resonate with your soul. Join our community, subscribe, and allow the radiant light of divine wisdom to illuminate your path. We express our gratitude for your integral role in this uplifting journey. And we pray that God's abundant blessings overflow in your life. Amen. Stay connected with us on all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel. And feel free to explore our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Thank you. And may God abundantly bless you.